Today's message is taken from Lamentation chapter 2 verse 19. So would you please turn the Bibles to the second chapter of Lamentations which is found immediately after the book of Jeremiah is stacked between Jeremiah and Ezekiel, a very short book, and chapter 2. One verse that is going to be our devotion uh, text is verse 19. So let's read that verse. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Now, it doesn't sound like a very optimistic passage, does it? Well, Lamentation is a book, as the title of the book suggests, written with tears, a lament, a weeping, a crying. It was written in the context of God's great wrath that came upon Jerusalem. If you read the very first verse of this chapter, you'll be able to envision what it was like. Verse 1 of chapter 2 says, How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Israel was the Lord's footstool. In other words, it was the place on earth where God put his feet. Now, wherever the Lord is, wherever he takes claim, even to put his feet, he's going to be blessed. Because his glory resides. His blessings abides. His truth and justice, grace and mercy outpours wherever he is. And that was the glory of Israel. Ancient Israel thrived. And there was no nation like Israel. There was no city like Jerusalem. It was that golden city on the hill of Zion. Where God's name was worshipped. It was the only city where God's name was placed. And there was at the top of that hill of Jerusalem. The temple of God. It was a beautiful sight. It was the envy of the nations that surrounded Israel. They time after time tried to conquer that city. But God was its fortress. God was its defender. Until this point of time. When the Lord turned against Israel. God turned against Jerusalem. Because the people of Jerusalem made that city an abominable city. A city filled with idols. A, f a city that called on the name of the Lord but just to keep the tradition and nothing more. They abandoned the truth of God even though they worshipped the name of the Lord. They went after the things of the hidden world. They danced with the world they, they, they sang the songs of the sinful men and women. They worshipped just like them, the idols they set up. They say, we know the Lord is our God, but then they behaved as though the world is their God. Absolute change. So the Lord, as verse 1 says, covered the city with his anger like a cloud that come and sat on it. You know in the past, Israel were accustomed to, accustomed to a cloud. That was a cloud known as Shekinah in Hebrew. Shekinah means glory. It was a cloud of God's glory. 
But now the Bible says in chapter 2 verse 1, Israel faced the cloud of God's, not glory, but wrath. That's fearsome. That's frightening. And also you might have noticed verse 1 says, God himself cast down the beauty of Israel from heaven to earth. What a casting that would be. You know, I've seen people, I mean, of course, on the TV screen, people jumping down from planes, the parachute, diving. It's scary, isn't it? I just read that the former president of America, George Bush, who, is recently, who was recently admitted, the senior George Bush, jumped down three times from the plane after he celebrated his 80th birthday. He was a very daring man, I think. I think if you ask me at this time to jump from a plane, I think my heart will collapse. It's scary. You know, when we go for evangelism, I watch some people, they're scared of height. And uh, when they come closer to the edge of the corridor, they look like this. I have seen it with my own eyes. Sometimes I feel like, you know, just laughing, but I can't because it's real fear, fear of height. Now, Casting down from heaven to earth deliberately is a sign of God's wrath. And that's exactly what God did to Israel. You know what was going on in Israel at that time? Utter devastation. The foreign armies, particularly the army of Nebuchadnezzar, marched into Jerusalem. Before that, the army of Assyria destroyed the northern part of Israel. Then comes the mighty army of Babylon. Marching down all the way to Jerusalem. Had no mercy. They pulled down the fortress. They, they marched into the beautiful city. They tore apart the temple of God. They pluck out all the gold and silver and diamonds that decorated the temple of God. They took all the precious Vessels that went into the Holy of Holies, rip off everything, and they went to the city, pulled the ladies out, and raped them, cut open the wombs of pregnant women, pulled out the babies, let them die. And if you read carefully the book of Lamentation, it says they were so hungry because there's nothing to eat that mothers fed on the dead bodies of the children. Utter devastation came to Jerusalem. This is no myth. These are historical facts. Which can be read not only in the Bible, in the history of the world. And the Bible says God did it. Now this was predicted so many times through prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Now Jeremiah wrote one whole book prior to this book. This book, Lamentation, is also written by Jeremiah. And it is very clearly told in the prophecy of Jeremiah that God will bring this nation if they don't repent. They laughed at Jeremiah. They put him into dungeon. They lock him up and they make fun of him day and night. Make him suffer for preaching the truth. So when the army came through, poor Jeremiah had to cry. He lamented. So that's the setting of the verse that we read in verse 19. The year 2012 is coming to an end. It is of God's mercies that we are not consumed. Many of us have stubbornly sinned against God. If you ever think that God is blind... God has not seen what you have done or God has not heard what you said or if you think God is so impressed by you please drop the idea quickly. Apostle, I'm sorry, Jeremiah the prophet shows us what should be our responses before God. You see, he talks about 
praying. We are here for a night worship. We are here for what we call watch night service. You know the late watches of the night. We are going to keep ourselves awake to seek God. Is it necessary? Last Lord's Day I wrote an article. I spent time to think about that article because I've heard people saying, why should come late into night to worship? Why can't stay home and sleep? Is it not enough to just pray and sleep? Some people are very bitter in coming to church. But they don't mind to go to Orchard Road or Marina Bay or some other place and count down. And I want to tell you, after worship, don't go to those places and watching all the nonsense and waste your time. Go home and sleep. A lot of nonsense going on out there. I mean, if you pass by the road, I'm not going to blame you, but these are not the places for Christians to spend the night. There is nothing, nothing that pleases God in those places, let me tell you. Nothing at all. It's better to keep away from these places because you don't know who will drink through the night and come on your top and finish you off. So please, we should not be where drunken stupors are being acted out. Stay away, please. It was good that you came to seek God tonight. Now please remember this. As I said, this verse is filled with language of prayer, such as crying out, pouring out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. So I'm going to talk about watch night prayer. Firstly, it is never too late to pray. It is never too late to pray. Because the verse here says, Arise, cry out in the night. Arise, if you are lying down, wake up, God says. Israel abandoned their God. God has visited them in great anger. They have no more strength. There is no food. There is no water. There is no nourishment to, body, to the body and soul. The temple is gone. Worship has ceased. <coughs> Houses have been destroyed. People are living in the open like in the desert itself. And that the prophet says, you may be tired, you may be sick, you may have no strength. Arise! It's almost like going to the hospital and you see somebody is dying, you tell him, wake up, pray. I know you don't like that. But what hope left for you and me? Tell, tell me please. Is there any hope in your life that you can make it? A man whom I love very much, who is not a Christian, whom I had the privilege of ministering in the recent months, through this whole year, I had the privilege of talking to him in many different circumstances, and he had the opportunity to listen to me in preaching, even in this church. He sent me a beautiful poem this evening. I read through it. And he talks about forgetting to mo yesterday and hoping as the new year come. To bid goodbye is to say hello and all that. Interesting statements. Nice poem to read. But I reply him with another little poem that the Lord put in my mind. Within two minutes I wrote that. And I said, days and months and years, they come and go. And our life fight a losing battle only to see life perishing like the grass in the field unless you know the one who is eternal the one who is the same yesterday today and forever you have no hope my dear friend you and I have no strength of our own all our 
pretty faces, handsome look, all our wealth, all our intellectual ability are nothing but just a breath. Unless God help us. Unless he show mercy to us. We are all dust and ashes. Don't you agree? So arise. Even though you are tired. Even though you feel sleepy tonight. Even though you say, I'd rather get away from this place. No, don't go. Let your souls awake tonight. It's never too late. Young children, you may have a habit of sleeping at 9 o'clock. Wake up, I say to you. You better trust the Lord now. Don't close your eyes. Your daddy and mommy didn't bring you here to sleep. Sit straight, please. Don't lean back. Open your mouth. It, that's not why, why we are here. Everybody, okay, good. I see some children sitting up. Very good. That's the way. No leaning back and... I wake you up, okay, if you do that. I know it's quite late night. Wake up, everybody. I know even little ones would see World Cup late in the night. I know little boy, young boys would say, Daddy, wake me up, okay, 2 a.m., huh? The fellow would never wake up, but for World Cup, they will wake up. <laughs> so tonight is an important day. The Bible here says, listen, arise. Yeah, arise. Cry out in the night. It's never too late. Oh, there will be nights in the coming year where you cannot sleep late night. And if the Spirit tells you, now go pray. Wake up from that comfortable bed. Kneel by the side and cry out to your God. Not only tonight, you should arise from your bed to pray. Pray for yourselves, pray for your children, pray for your grandchildren, pray for the church, pray for all the good work that the Lord has called us to do because tomorrow will be a day of trial. If you don't pray and receive your strength, you cannot carry on the work. Arise! O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, you are destroyed in your pride. Your fall was so great because you exalted yourself above your God. Now you are brought low, but if you would arise and seek God, it is not too late. Refreshing can come from His presence. Seek Him even the late night. And I also want to tell you this. The next phrase, it says, In the beginning of the watches, that means early hours of the day, Still night, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So let me tell you, it's never too early to seek the Lord. It is never too early to seek the Lord. In the beginning of the watches. How we should make our homes prayer houses. Houses of prayer. Day and night, let there be prayers. I have related to you in the past, God has blessed me with a godly home where my grandparents came to know the Lord Jesus. They loved the Lord. My parents were believers when my elderly grandparents, when they were alive, couldn't sleep in the night because of, you know, sleeping disorder that normally happens to elderly folks. They would sing in the night. They will recite my memory verses that they have learned. They would pray loud. And next room my grandfather is sleeping. And I can hear my grandmother singing. And I woke up early in the morning like 4 a.m. Only to hear my grandfather praying loud. For the entire family. For the pastor. For the church. For the preachers. For the missionaries. I heard them in the night. How wonderful was those nights. It comforted me in many ways. One, one thing is I'm very scared in the night, especially when I wake up. Because it's quiet, very quiet, right? Only thing I can hear is some horrible dogs. Wow! You know, it barks so, so horribly. 
I didn't grow up in Singapore, all right? I grew up in India, in a village setting, so you can understand, it's very different from Singapore. You hardly have stray dogs here. <laughs> and it's scary, late in the night, in dark areas, you hear all these sounds. But then in the room, I hear the name of the Lord. It's wonderful. It's okay to say loud, Lord Jesus, bless my home. Husbands, are you too macho to call, up, call on the Lord early in the morning? Too strong? Your masculinity is so great that you feel it's embarrassing to say early in the morning, Lord, have mercy upon my wife, have mercy upon my children. Or will you wake up early in the morning and sing a song? It's never too early to call upon the Lord. So here we are. As early as the first tick of the clock, if God permits, would fall on our ear in the year 2013. That will happen in about, what, two hours time? We want to praise the Lord together. It's never too early. So don't say it's a nonsense business, okay? The Bible does give us ample reason for worshipping God late in the night and early in the morning. I can tell you, if somebody falls sick in your house and if you have to keep awake late in the night, would you, wouldn't you do that? Just a week ago, I heard the testimony of the Wong family, Brother Daniel Wong and Stephanie and Carmen and Brandon. Sister Stephanie had a horrible fever, keep going up and up. They had to take her to A and E, and they are here. I'm glad to see them here. And they were tell, the children were saying to my children, and they had to wait until what? Two a.m., three a.m. Just a fever, just one fever. I'm not, you know, laughing at them. I'm telling all of us, it can happen to us. If you have no heart to wake up and pray, God had no problem to cause you to wake up, all right? So let's be thankful. It's not the late hour of 2012. Thank God before it's too late, in this late hour we can still come and say thank you Lord. Thank God, early in the morning, early in the beginning of 2013, we can meet our Lord, just as the Bible teaches us. You have chosen the right thing tonight. And I pray for throughout 2013, you will be a people who watch unto prayer, even late night and early in the morning. That's our calling. Will we not seek the Lord with great joy? If you can't sleep in the night, if you have a bit of insomnia, I give you a good medication. Go and pray. You will sleep well. Trust me. Don't turn on the TV and watch the nonsense. You will never sleep. The horror movie, the wicked things, is only trouble your soul even further. Call on the Lord. Humble yourself and the Lord will give you sleep. Oh, if not, he will give you grace and peace and strength. Because there is none who is sympathetic like him. Now, let me also say, it's never wrong to pray vehemently. It is never wrong to Cry out to the Lord. That verse says to you, Arise, cry out in the night. I think Jerusalem was full of crying. Wives who lost the husbands and sons, little girls. Raped and molested and abandoned to die in the street. 
there was so much, so much groaning and mourning all through the day, all through the night in the streets of Jerusalem. But seldom anyone told them, look to God and cry. They were crying because of pain. There was cry because of famine. There was cry because of um, loneliness, fear, doubt, misery. But there is a need to cry out before the face of the Lord. To the Lord. Do you have the habit of crying out to God? In, in 2012, the year that is passing us so quickly, did you have times when you really cried to God? Ah, oh, Lord. I have told you on a couple of occasions, especially this month, that 2012 has been my most trouble-filled, hardest year of all my life, particularly in the ministry. And the reason is this. The events, the experiences I had make me cry, literally cry. Oh, Lord. Ah, 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 Lord, will you not deliver me? Whether it's physical illness that I experienced or problems from people whom I met or the needs of the ministry, I cry out. Last Sunday we announced the need of about $50,000 for our ministries. And one sister told me after the worship service, Pastor, I'm so worried for you said, why, sister? Because the church has so much need. I will pray for you. May the Lord give you strength. I know you are bearing the burden. I'm glad somebody understands. And the person is going to pray. But that's not the only thing, need that we have. We are going to have our Jubilee Thanksgiving service, right? Do you know the session has budgeted $60,000 for that? Now, where am I going to find that? Add that up. Where are we going to find that? We want to bring our missionaries, at least some of them, back. We want to help anticipate some brothers who would not be able to pay for it, for, pray for the dinner. We want to help them if we can. We have one whole month of preaching going on and the expenses of booking these places every Saturday night. Then we are talking about five million to be raised by 2015, God willing, so that we can have a place of our own. What should be the response in the midst of all these needs? Cry out. Cry out! It can never be too much to pray. Can never be too much to ask. Because the Lord says, ask and you, it shall be given unto you. He says, cry unto me. I will hear you. Cry. Don't be embarrassed when you come before God. That you sigh. That you pour your heart in such vehement expression. Oh Lord, oh Lord, will you give me up? Will you forsake me? Oh God. It's never too much to pray. Sometimes the burdens of heart can be so great. Let me tell you, there won't be any, no, any voice any tears, but just a silence. Now, I would say then, it is never too little to be quiet in prayer. Read the next phrase again. 
It's right there. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Pour out your heart like water. It's not the flood raging sea, but the water that flows out from a bucket or from a pot quietly into the ground. Because the pot is now pushed over. It's not standing upright in its weakness. It falls over, tumbles over, and the water just gushes out. Your heart must be poured before God. It doesn't have to have all the beautiful terms. You may not be eloquent. Forget about your grammar. <laughs> when you are so, so full of emotion, what grammar? Nobody will tell you where is your past tense or present tense. You know, I had a Korean friend, a wonderful friend. He, he just called me two days ago from Korea, Mokpo. He's a pastor. We studied together. And his English was not so good. I mean, he's still learning. And uh, one day we were all ch ch chatting. You know, we're like friends. It doesn't matter what country from you came from, whether Cambodia or Singapore or Malaysia or Korea, Japan. It doesn't matter. We all sat together. We're talking. Just pure fun, you know, ch chatting and all Christian friends. And somebody was trying to be cheeky with this brother of mine I'm from Korea. And he said, where is your grammar? And he said, my grandma died. <laughs> so there goes his grammar. He said, come on, don't talk about grammar when we are joking. You know, that's his point. You know. Where is your grandma? He said, my grandma died. <laughs> you know, nobody is going to say, shut your mouth because you have no grammar. A little baby comes to you and say, mommy. Ma, 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 ma. Where's your grammar? Speak properly, boy. I'm going to send you to Raffles Institution. Start speaking properly. Nonsense. You immediately guess what the baby is trying to say. Ma, 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 ma. I want to eat something, right? When you are so worn out, when you are so incapacitated by the troubles of life, it's not about the beauty of language. But a heart that poured out like water before the Lord. You can never be so dumb that you cannot pray. Even a dumb man can pour his heart before God. It's never too late. It's never too early. It never can be so vehement. It can never be so silent. Come all at all times to worship God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord because he hears the prayers of his people. And that's why we are here tonight. To praise our wonderful God. To sing glory to him. Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, as the rest of that verse says, lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Now you may say, I got enough bank savings. We are not like Jerusalem, which was <clears throat> war-torn and famished. Singapore is a rich country. Economic problems of Greece and America has not come our way yet. We are okay. Be careful. Even if that's the case for the next 20 years, let me tell you, there is even more serious famine in our country. That's the famine of God's word. There are plenty of churches in Singapore, but very few really preach the word and the truth. People are dying inside the churches without God's word. They are fed with worldliness, not God's truth. 
They are fed with entertainment, smooth talk. They are not revived. And it will be a shocking day when the Lord Jesus comes. Because many will be like the five foolish virgins who are not prepared for the coming of Christ. Pray for your young children. That they will be fed. Both with material food as well as spiritual food. Beg before the Lord. You have you not seen when you go into third world countries, when you sit in a bus or train, these poor children in the street come, Ma, Ma, Ma. Do that before your God. Lord, pass me not by. Pass me not. Please bless me. Bless my children. Bless me, Lord. Let's don't sit in our pride and forget the need to seek his blessing. Blessed is a man who seek the Lord while he may be found. For the day is coming. He will turn his face against every arrogant, unrepentant man and woman. So, my dear friends, let it begin now that you stretch the hands of your hearts to the Lord. Lift up your souls and thank Him for the mercy you received and again beg for mercies that you and your families may be blessed and not destroyed. Because the challenges of the next year, the troubles of next year, are greater than you yourself. Greater than your money can manage. Greater than your intellectual power can manage. Greater than your emotional threshold can withhold. We are not equal to the task. We are feeble men. So beg for God's mercy. Oh Lord, please don't leave me alone. Please don't send me back today without your blessings be given to me. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of your children who faint for hunger. We pray that God will bless Singapore. We pray that our children will not be sitting at the sideways of the streets of Singapore to beg when foreigners come to see this country. Hey, all these fortunes can go in one second. It only takes one tsunami. It only takes one earthquake. It only takes one big bomb. Some madman planned somewhere. Government is trying so hard to protect our country. Blessed be his name. We pray for our government that they would do a good job. But it's still a human government. It cannot give you absolute protection. Unless the sovereign God watch over us. He who is the keeper of Israel, who neither slumbereth nor sleep. If he doesn't keep us, we and our children will be begging in the street. And the worst still is to be spiritual, spiritual paupers, spiritual bankrupts in a rich country like this is the worst thing to happen. You know why? Because you think God is blessing you because of your money. And that money is no proof of God's blessing. You know, money and material prosperity of every kind has a narcotizing effect. It has this, this ability to intoxicate you, thinking that, oh, money is everything and God is happy with me. Health is everything. Oh, I got a boyfriend, I got a girlfriend, I got a wife, I got a children, I got children, I got a husband, um, everything is okay, I got a new house, I got promotion, look at my new car. Oh, God is good to me. Hey, but what are you doing? Are you pleasing God? Lift your hands up. Say, Lord, I deserve nothing good. Have mercy to bless me. May our church learn this great lesson. 
Do not wait until a situation like what Jeremiah and his people went into to pray. We don't have to wait until that night or that sort of situation to have watch nights prayers or early morning prayers. It's far better for us to seek him even in a watch night prayer like this while we are still blessed by him. Before the chastisement comes, let's repent and seek him. And that's good for us. And so, dear friends, your coming has been most blessed. And may the Lord continue to instruct your heart to be humble and to seek him at all times. <clears throat> Let's turn our hymn book to hymn number 187.